Okay, are we all ready? I'm ready. Yeah, greetings and welcome to another WebEx developer webinar. I'm Phil Bellani with the WebEx developer evangelism team. The leader of our team, Adam Weeks, is here too. Um, he's also doing the production work behind the scenes. So thank you very much, Adam. Uh, but today's presentation is going to be unleashing the power of multi-stream in the WebEx web meetings SDK delivered by no other than the web SDK team. I know there was a lot of developers that were anxiously waiting this multi-stream feature. So we're really pleased to cover this topic with you today. Um, we're also going to be joined by one of our partners, uh, Jason Ruan from Civis AI. And they're going to talk about the apps that they built with the SDK. So we're definitely looking forward to that. Um, but uh, for this session, we're going to be using Slido for our polls and Q&A. So if you have questions, you can use the Slido right inside the WebEx app, or uh, you can join the Slido from your mobile device by scanning the QR code here. Um, but uh, before we kick things off, we have some quick developer news and updates and announcements that we'd like to share with you before we get to the main content. So you can go to the next slide, please. So uh, all the content that I'm going to mention here can be found on our blog page at developer.webex.com slash blog. Um, so go right to the next section here. Uh, to start off, we have three helpful articles, um, and these are all to get acclimated with the some new developer features that we've released recently. Um, in the first one, uh, we show you how to quickly set up a, a complete guest to guest application from scratch uh, with no coding knowledge required in this one. So it uh, keeps things really easy. Uh, but uh, for those who don't know, uh, guest to guest apps allow full featured WebEx meetings between non licensed users. And that really opens up a lot of great use cases. Um, so you just need to follow along with the instructions inside the blog to get going quickly. You don't have to worry about coding anything to do it. So uh, again, it gets things start very, very fast. Uh, and then in the second one here, uh, we recently announced a new webhook event and that fires when a WebEx service app is authorized or deauthorized by an administrator inside of Control Hub. Um, so this article is gonna give you all the details and how that one works. And then the third one um, is a companion to this webinar. Um, you know, we kind of detailed the, the multi-stream feature for you. Um, so this is one's going to be a good one to read right after this session. Kind of sums up all the details you're going to learn today. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, so and then to the next part, uh, we also have two great developer stories that were recently published. You know, and the first one up on top there is. Uh, elevating the airline travel customer experience with the WebEx Web SDK. Um, so this one's going to explain how uh, one of the major airlines in the U.S. leverages the WebEx Web SDK to streamline the customer experience at airports. Kind of makes travel smoother and more enjoyable. Or I think we're all looking for that. Um, but the the second story is, is actually uh, done as a guest blog from our App Hub partner, Broadsource. And they write about how they leverage the, the dev platform to build the secure call for WebEx. Um, you know, that's a cutting edge solution for PCI compliant payments and communications. Um, so that one's a really popular one. Um, but again, you can check all of these out over on our blogs page, developer.webex.com slash blog. Um, so yeah, I told you that was gonna be quick and easy. I wanna get to the main content now for our feature presentation. Uh, I'm going to hand it off to, over to my colleague, Adwaith, for introductions. So, Adwaith, please take it away. Uh, yeah, thank you, Phil. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, so, hey, folks, good evening, good morning, wherever you're calling in from. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, I'm Adwaith, and I am a member of the web team here at WebEx Developer Platform. And today we are going to present this webinar on the recent multi-stream feature, which we have added to our meetings SDK. So yeah, hello. And before I like before I start, you know, I'd like to hold a small Slido poll. Uh, so how many of you here have exposure with the WebEx meeting SDK? So I just want to get a gauge of the crowd, and based on that, we can like you know tailor our webinar. Oh, okay. So I see some answers already. Uh, yeah, everybody, please do scan the code. Uh, we would love uh, more answers. More the better, more the merrier, as they say. Uh, yeah, I'll just give it a couple of more seconds. We have five. I'd like to get double digits. We have eight. Can we get double digits? Uh, 
Yeah. Next, yeah, we have uh, users. I like that. <laughs> I think one more. Awesome. So yeah, I think we have people who have used it regularly and people have heard about it. That's great. I think it's good to see that we have regular users about it. Uh, but for those who don't know about it as well, uh, not to worry, we have a brief introduction. So yeah, awesome. This is good. This is good. Thanks everyone for filling out the Slido. Okay, so I want to set the agenda for the webinar today. So I'll start off with a brief introduction into the SDK, what it does, how it's used. Uh, and then I'll move on to like multi-stream versus transcoded stream, give a brief intro into what multi-stream is. Post that, we'll dive a bit more into some of the use cases. So I'll talk a bit about a few business use cases we've identified. And of course, since we're building this product for developers, I'll talk a little bit about developer use cases. And then we'll talk about some of the nuanced features in the WebEx SDK, uh, particularly that uses multi-stream. And finally, we have a demo uh, by our team, uh, wherein we're mimicking a certain situation. I'll get to that when we come to the demo slide. And uh, the cherry on the top basically is the partner presentation. So today we're lucky to have with us uh, Jason from Cives AI, a uh, Cisco partner, and he's going to talk about how Cives has used the web, the meetings SDK, and in particular the multi-stream feature uh, in one of their products. And I think to end it, we'll end with a Q&A session if time permits. So I'm excited for this. Uh, I'm yeah. Let's begin. So this is just to introduce the SDK to those who don't know. So basically, it's our meetings SDK is a toolkit that allows developers to integrate WebEx meeting functionalities into their web apps. So you're using this SDK, you can create quite interactive and customized meetings. Right? And uh, some of the key features it has, we have real-time communications, uh, screen sharing is possible, host meetings, join meetings, uh, among others. And of course, uh, the topic of today's webinar, multi-stream. So this is just a brief intro to get people to understand what the SDK is uh, for those who didn't. I, I think most of the people are aware, but this is just an intro for that. Before I move on, I have another slider question. I know I am sorry for putting two sort of back to back, but I'd like to know how many people are aware of what multi-stream is. Uh, so please, uh, I I'd like to get double digits on this as well. <laughs> I just want to see, the oh, that's that's quick. Really. Okay, not long on. So see a lot of no's. Okay, I see some yeses, 40, 60, okay, uh, equal. Can we can we get a few more? Uh, I'd like to get one more than last time. I got 11 last time. Can we get 12? Okay. <laughs> 12 is my lucky number. Uh, I don't think, okay. <laughs> Nobody's putting 12. All right, uh, but never mind. I think uh, most of the people here, we have like a fair mix of people who don't know what multi-stream is and we have some people who know what it is. Uh, not to worry, uh, I will explain about multi-stream. So yeah, thanks folks. So to understand what multi-stream is, I just want to explain what we were using prior to the implementation of multi-stream in the SDK. And that was a transcoded stream. So in case of a transcoded stream, users or developers will basically receive a single media stream. It's a stitched media stream and it's just a single thing that they receive. Because of this, there are some limitations. And one of the limitations is you have a fixed set of video layouts. So if you can see the screenshot that I have in this slide, all the layouts, all the panes are fixed. You know, These are the fixed sizes. There's no ability to customize them. There's no flexibility in them. In case of multi-stream, however, you have multiple media streams that you receive at the same time. So it's concurrently receiving multiple streams. And because of this, developers can customize their video feed layouts and their panes. Just to give an example, this is from our sample app in the SDK. This is one pane where you know we've sort of enlarged the video view and the others are put in a very small sort of uh, pane size. Uh, and you can do much more with this, but this is just one example that I wanted to show to illustrate the key difference. So the key difference is basically you have multiple media streams in multi-stream, whereas in transcoded, it's a single stitch media stream. And because of that, you have a lot more flexibility in uh, the video feed layouts for the multi-stream. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, I want to dive a bit more into some of the business use cases. Uh, one possible use case is the education in industry. Uh, and one of the use cases of multi-stream is in virtual classrooms. So you can have sessions where uh, teachers and students have a lot of vivid interactions. So let's say a teacher asks a question to a student, they can highlight that student, pin them, make them answer the question. The student can do that for the teacher, vice versa. So it's quite useful in the education sector. Another use case could be in judiciary and legislation. 
In this case, it can be used to properly facilitate remote court proceedings. So you can have different layouts for judges, lawyers, or if you have a jury in your country, you can have a jury. And this is sort of mimicking a virtual courtroom. So this is a really powerful use case and it's quite interesting. Uh, and my favorite is the virtual conferences. So I don't know about you, but if you have attended a lot of international conferences, you'll notice that sometimes there are people who speak in languages, different languages. Uh, in this case, multi-stream can be used so that uh, the audience can selectively listen to interpreters who are speaking in their own language. Uh, I think that's a great, uh, you know, great feature and a great idea. It, it really helps in uh, global transmission of knowledge. So that is this, this is my favorite use case. Uh, now, again, uh, since we are an SDK team and we're building an SDK, our main uh, you know, uh, users are developers. So I, I just want to del delve a little bit deeper into what developers can use with the multi-stream feature in our SDK. And the first one is pin participant stream. So in this case, you if you want to pin, a, you know, if you want users to pin a particular video stream of a participant so that no matter what they're visible, you know, no matter who's talking, this participant is visible, it's possible with multi-stream and with SDK. Another one is custom video layouts. I talked about this a bit. So for example, you see the stage view over here. Uh, you know, you can arrange your panes in different layouts and it's customizable. So you have multiple video uh, streams and, you know, basically you can display them as, uh, you know, as per user preferences. So that way is, I think it's a really powerful uh, feature and flexibility is quite good. Now uh, I'm going to dive a bit deeper into some of the more nuanced features of the multi-stream uh, of multi-stream in the WebEx SDK. Uh, and one is of course, fully customizable layouts, which we uh, talked about before. Uh, the other one is stream control and management. And when I say this, I mean, user, you know, you can basically selectively listen uh, or subscribe to certain streams, uh, switch between them. So it allows greater control over the streams and compared to the transported stream and you have more man uh, management capabilities over them. Uh, another use case is the optimized bandwidth management. Uh, so in this particular case, we offer two things. So one is we allow user developers to like set the size, the size hint of the uh, media stream. So in this way, they can customize, you know, the particular media stream, what bandwidth they want. At the same time, we also have internal capabilities. For example, if your users have a low bandwidth, our internal services automatically update the size based on the bandwidth to a certain limit, right? And if the bandwidth is very, very low, we'll just show the avatar. So we have both of those capabilities in it. And uh, yeah, I encourage everybody to go out and, you know, check all these features. It's quite a, you know, it's a very powerful SDK. So please do go ahead and work with this. Uh, yeah. So now I'd like to set the stage for the demo. So, uh, you know, this is a demo that's been created by our team and I would like the audience to think about a situation wherein, you know, a disaster has happened in a city. Let's assume a flood. Uh, it's actually happening in Bangalore right now. And the government wants to actively monitor the situation. So they have experts, they have doctors, engineers, bureaucrats, police officers, and they want to create a sort of virtual war room. Uh, so today, you know, we have simulated this war room and uh, my colleague Shreyas will be presenting this. So over to you Shreyas, take it over. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Advait, for that amazing introduction and a deep dive into multi-stream. So now we have an idea of what multi-stream is all about. Now let's see what we can achieve with multi-stream. So uh, and this is a demo that we have created. I would like to go ahead and uh, show the the code walk the the code walkthrough for this demo that we have. So. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we did a webinar on our meetings SDK, where we talked a lot about um, how we can join a meeting, how we initialize WebEx, how we get the local stream and everything all about uh, around that. So if someone has missed that, I do recommend checking that out because we had a, an amazing demo there as well. Um, but to get everyone on the same page, I'll go through all these steps again. So this is a simple React application that we have created. And we have divided our code into six very simple, very small, straightforward steps. So, um, the first step is to initialize and register the WebEx object. Now, uh, the WebEx package is available as uh, an NPM package as well as a CDN. So for simplicity, we are using the CDN link over here. Now, once we have the link available, so we, we have WebEx 
object available with us and we can start uh, with the initialization. So to initialize, we will be using our access token. Now, what this does is it uh, authenticates the user and once the authentication is done, the user is ready to communicate with all the WebEx services that are available. Uh, the next step is to register with meetings. So once we register with meeting, what happens is it creates all the necessary connections, registers with all the services. And once this is done, we are ready to actually join a meeting or maybe create a meeting um, and do anything that is available with the meetings uh, object here. In the third step, we are actually going to create a meeting that we want to join. So we want to create a local instance of this meeting. Here we are using uh, the SIP URL for that meeting. And all we have to do is, is call the create method and we'll have a local instance of that meeting available. Now, if I were to join the meeting right now, I won't be able to hear anyone and no one will be able to hear me. To facilitate the media, we need to set up local stream and remote stream. These are two terms I'm going to use a lot. So when I say local stream, I mean myself view, myself uh, video and my own uh, audio. And when I say remote stream, that just means the streams or the audio and video of all the participants that are there in the meeting. So for, 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 the, remote, for the local streams, um, our meetings uh, package has very straightforward uh, methods. So to create uh, the microphone stream, uh, you just need to call the create microphone stream method. And similarly for the camera stream, just have to call the create camera stream method and you will have uh, your local streams uh, set it up. Now, why I mentioned about the earlier webinar is because all the points that I discussed up till now, we have already discussed about them in the earlier webinar. This shows that if anyone, if, if a customer or if a developer has some experience with uh, the meetings SDK or they already have a product which uses uh, the WebEx meeting SDK to uh, facilitate their meeting experience, there is not a lot that they want, they would have to change to start using multi-stream. Okay, so let's get into the unexplored terrain of multi-stream. So as Advait mentioned that once uh, once we have multi-stream enabled, we will start receiving concurrent video streams and audio streams for all the participants that are there in the meeting. Now, before we join the meeting, we need to tell our code that, oh, hey, do this with my streams. So that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to set up some uh, event listeners on video streams as well as on audio streams. So for audio streams, whenever there is a change in um, the audio streams, so whenever someone turns their uh, mic off or if if a new user joins or maybe someone leaves there is a remote audio created event which has all the streams available in this media group now to actually listen to these audio streams all we have to do is from this media group get the remote media and then assign um, all these media streams to an audio tag in our ui and that's it that's from from that point on, you will start hearing all the participants in the meeting. So that's a simpler step as compared to video. Video has a bit more uh, to do. So very similarly in video stream, whenever there is any change, there is a layout change event uh, triggered. So with this event, we get the layout ID. So as you all saw, there is a layout with all equal. So all the video panes are going to be of the same size. And then we have one plus five. This is the same that Advait showed uh, in the presentation where there was one bigger pane and a couple of smaller paints. But let's say you want to do something very innovative with your streams. You can just get the streams and do whatever you want in your UI. And then we also get uh, active uh, speaker video panes and member video panes. These are just the speakers who are actively speaking and these are members who don't who are not speaking as of now. And then finally, if in case uh, we have screen shared, then all the information about that will be in this object, screen share video object. Now, once we have all the video streams available with us, again, we just need to get them and then assign them to our, uh, just, just paint them on our UI. Now, 
it could be something very simple or something innovative. I'm going to show you how we are doing it using this update layout uh, method. Now, um, on uh, so I would also like to listen to what's happening with these streams. Are these streams actually getting updated, or are the streams uh, getting? Are we are we turning on? If someone is turning off their video or turning it on, so. For that, on each of these streams, there is a source update event that is triggered. So this update uh, tells us about what is the state of the video. It could be live. It could uh, there there could be no source to it, or maybe it's just the avatar that we want to show. And then finally, and then finally, uh, if the bandwidth is not available, then uh, it'll just say uh, not enough bandwidth, and it'll just uh, and and there we can just update our layout. So this covers the multi-stream part of uh, the meeting. Now, all we have to do is just join the meeting. So to join the meeting, we, we need to call join with media uh, method. And here uh, we need to pass the media options and the join options. Now this flag is really important. Enable multi-stream. This tells uh, the meetings that, oh, hey, this person wants to use multi-stream. And then for media options, all we have to do is pass our local stream, which is which is what we created a couple of steps ago. Make sure they are enabled and this, uh, just join the meeting. So that's that's it. That's as simple as it can get. Um, and let's see how this actually looks like in action. I'm going to start the server. And yeah, you all should start seeing my video. Okay, so I have my video turned on. Okay, it's just initializing. So all you can see here, I have the option to join a meeting. Let me click on this and fingers crossed, hopefully nothing breaks. Are the demo gods, they're with us. They are with us, I think they're with us. Okay, yeah, so so it, it initialized everything. It made sure I was part of the meeting. And as you all can see, we have some some uh, users in the in the lobby. Now, coming back to this scenario, um, let's say the state uh, leader wants to put put some user in disaster management, or maybe you know they want to. Uh, they are some medical uh, professionals, and they want to do uh, some kind of research. I don't know. And then we can group all these users into various groups. And then let's say I would want you know all the disaster management people to go and talk about something very specific that's happening, so I can just ask them to, hey, why don't you, I just move them to a session. So here the session is just another meeting and I just move them. They can come back to me and say, you know, hey, this is what we have decided. Um, and yeah, and we can take a decision on that. So yeah, this is the demo that we have for you all today. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this and this is the power of multi-stream. You all can do whatever you want with the various streams that we have. So yeah, that concludes the stream. Before going, I do have a bonus. Um, so this chat system is built using one of our widgets. That's the space widget that we have. Um, so stay tuned. We might have something for you at last, uh, for the widgets as well. So now I would like to call Jason from, uh, Sivas. So Sivas has come up with a really innovative idea of, uh, using multi-stream. So Jason, over to you, please, uh, let. Let us in about uh, what what Civis is doing. Hi, thanks very much. Yeah, so I'm Jason Ruan, and I'm an engineer here at Civis, and we built courts for WebEx to satisfy the essential court requirements. And we're building a whole set of products on top of the WebEx SDK. Uh, they're designed specifically for courts and legislative bodies. Uh, these customers can have unique use cases and they stem from the real world, so they're not negotiable. Uh, so for us, there were many benefits in moving to the multi-stream within the WebEx SDK. So we have a variety of modes for running our product in specific and unique layout designs. Sometimes that can be very specific, even on a per customer basis, we change the layout. Sometimes even breaking out of the standard rectangle for the video canvas. For example, we have video pinning. So first off, we can see here an example of the video pinning on the top left. We see the judge getting a very prominent position there permanently up on the top left, even when other people are speaking. So some other participants cannot ever appear 
Um, some are always positioned in certain locations. It all depends on their role and their participation and their stance within the meeting here. So we also have an idea of stage building. Sometimes we want different people seeing different things based on their role. So we want to have screen shares in certain places at certain times, and we want to tie the agenda, such as the court cases on the right there, really into the participants where they're engaging within the video canvas area. We also care about uh, single audio feed recording. So we want the ability to selectively listen to a specific interpreter while ignoring all the other interpreters. And for a court situation, you might want to redirect a single audio feed specifically for recording. We also have video canvas contextual menus. So we now have control of the text overlay for each person and for each video stream. So especially when they're speaking or sharing, that means we can also have contextual menus when clicking on a participant's video pane, not just to pin them, but to moderate them, like using their audio or video or actually eject them right there from the video space. So uh, in closing from us, like we already got up and started so fast, the flexibility and control was the deciding factor for us here. Uh, the documentation was all there, the worked examples. So we just followed along and got running in day one. Uh, yeah, it's been a real game changer for us here. Thanks very much for delivering that. And that allows us to deliver what the customers actually needed. So thanks for that. Yeah, thank you so much, Jason and Shreyas. I think this, these were really, really great presentations in the demo. So, and it was really nice. I enjoyed everything and Sivess's product is wonderful. Loved how you use the multi scene feature. And thank you so much for speaking about it as well. Uh, yeah, so that's it folks. I think we're at the fag end of the webinar. Uh, I think we have some time for Q and A. I think we have ample time. So uh, yeah, please do post your questions. Uh, our team is here. We will try and um, you know resolve as many as possible. Um, I know we had one that, that uh, came in here and, and basically they, they said that they, does the SDK work with WSMP platform or only meeting center, um, a WSMP WebEx suite meeting platform, which is the, 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 the newest, latest and greatest platform. And then we have meeting center, which is the classic platform. Um, so do we have a definitive answer there. Yeah. Uh, I think it works for both the SDK is common for both the uh, suite meetings platform as well as the meeting center. Great. Yep. Uh, feel free to ask questions, folks. Uh... Um, someone here was asking. Um... Did the participants in the demo have their videos turned on? Um, All right. Um, okay. Sorry. I, I I think I didn't mention this. So, the meeting that I joined during the demo was a demo meeting that we created. It was. It is actually an ongoing meeting, and those were some bot users that we used. And yes, they had their video turned on. Um, and, and that's what you all saw in the demo. It was actually a meeting that I joined. Yeah, now sometimes it gets a little tricky when you're actually on a, a WebEx meeting and then you also have to demo a WebEx meeting. So yeah. very resourceful yeah, so there exactly. in doing that. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So, so users had their video turned on. So, yeah, it was an actual meeting. Okay, and um, I think the only other one was, you know, somebody asking if this session is recorded. As usual, it is. Um, we actually have a, a webinars page. You may have seen it already when you registered for this one, um, but you can actually go back and see all of our our, our old webinars too. So all the recordings you can view right there. Um, the Web SDK team has already done a few of these for us, so we're always very appreciative of them uh, to do this for us. I know. This isn't their full time job to do presentations like this. You know, they actually have to do real engineering work. Um, so anytime that we can, you know, steal some of their time um, so they can talk to our developer community, we're always very, very happy. Um, so let me see here. Uh, I think there was another one coming in here. Is this, a, is this going to be demoed at all at, at WebEx one? Uh, does anybody know that one? Just in case anybody is going to be attending the uh, WebEx one event next week. 
I don't think so. Uh, yeah, uh, Keshwa, are you aware of anything? I'm not sure. I don't think it's going to be demo. Okay, but uh, you can always come over to the WebEx for Developers booth, and we're happy to have that discussion with you. So um, if we need to pop something up and, and show you around the SDK a little bit, uh, we'll be happy to do that. Um, uh, I'll be there. Uh, Adam Weeks will be there too. So um, you know, feel free to stop by the booth if you're going to be over at WebEx one in um, in Hollywood, Florida. Um, and then someone else got popped in with an interesting question, um, slightly related here. Are, are, are there upgrades for widgets coming up? Anybody know about remember WebEx widgets? Uh, so. Am I on to it? A little quiet there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are we are planning to uh, bring in you know upgrades for widgets. Uh, especially we've been updating the meeting widget, we've been adding a few nice uh, features there. Uh, we're also going to be doing some things with the space widget. So uh, we might have webinars in the future for that as well. Just keep a look out. Great, yeah, and just to, for everybody, in case you don't know what WebEx widgets are, um, you know, that allows you to take, you know, pieces of, of the WebEx app using kind of like the same look and feel as, you know, the WebEx client itself, and you can quickly embed that into your web applications. So you don't have to go through the full SDK methods or anything. It's just minimal lines of code. You can insert that into your web application, and then you can have, you know, WebEx modalities right inside of your web application. Um, so you can find out more information about that on our developer portal, developer.webex.com. Uh, when you get over the documentation, you can just scroll down a bit uh, in the left-hand pane and just look for widgets. Um, so, and these widgets are a little bit different than the ones that you would see in WebEx Contact Center. Um, so just so you know that the, there's two different types of widgets, you know, one inside of the WebEx Suite and then there's one inside of WebEx Contact Center. So the, the one referred to here um, is for the WebEx app. And for the WebEx suite. Yeah, and I just wanted to add one more thing about the um, the WebEx one. Um, so yeah, I think Phil uh, and Adam, you're going to be there, and we also have the WebEx samples, uh, you know, organization in GitHub. So all of these demos that we're showing in these webinars, they're available there. So you can easily just clone them and run them on your own as well. Yeah. Yep, and um, so if you know if you ever have any questions when you're digging into these, you know, please uh, reach out to our developer support team. Um, we basically just have a team of engineers that are just helping developers out, you know, all the time. So they re they're really responsive. Um, you know, you don't need to be a partner or or anything like that. You know, but you can be a customer or partner. But even if you're just a developer trying things out and you need some help, um, that's what we're here for. So. Uh, we definitely love our developer community. Um, so if you do need any uh, technical assistance while you're building anything, uh, we're always here to help. And let me see, we have one more question that just came in here. Um, how many video and audio streams do we receive in a multi-stream setting? So um, for, for audio, I know it's four. So we'll receive, so it's, it's not too many uh, users audio that we'll uh, receive. It will be uh, simpler to understand with four uh, audios and for videos. I, I'm not sure if there is like a limit to correct me. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, I think there is no um, limit over there, but just to. Um, just to be safe, we, we do keep like a cap in, like I, I did keep a cap in, in the application so that, uh, my system can handle it. But yeah, I, I don't think there is like a top limit for, for the videos. Right. That keeps things very flexible. Yep. Okay. I, I think that might be all of the questions that we have for today. Um, all right. But yeah, thanks for. I think those were uh, quite a few questions. It was good to see them, uh, honestly. And yeah, thank you. I think we here at the web team, 
we just we do like presenting webinars so i think it was really good and uh, just before we end uh you know i, I just want to talk about some upcoming webinars people were teasing widgets so uh you know stay tuned i think we might have some webinars up on that and uh, there are some more features that you know we'd like to present as well uh so yeah please stay tuned uh please go to developer.webex.com webinars and stay tuned for any upcoming webinars uh we are always ready to <laughs> present uh and you know like phil and shrikanth and shreya spoke these are you know the support channels and a bunch of links uh, i really recommend and encourage people to go out there and you know uh play around with these links our sample app is you know something that uh, we maintain for the web sdk and it's something that's very exhaustive and you know quite comprehensive so i would encourage user uh, developers to go out you know play around toy with the sample app a lot of the features that we talked about and a lot of the things that shreya demoed you know you can sort of play around with them in the sample app as well so you know please do go ahead uh, and yeah i think uh, let's say from me over to you first <laughs> okay well i think that about does it so again thank you very much for joining um and stay tuned for our next one which will be in november uh we're going to be talking about uh about guest to guest uh which is kind of uh kind of a take on the blog that i mentioned at the beginning of the uh the presentation so uh i know that kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of sdk use cases uh so and widgets as well um you know people wanted yeah uh, you know have meetings between non-licensed users um so really this is going to be a nice companion to uh uh to this topic here today uh but with that we appreciate it and we'll see you next time Thank you. Thank you.